Learning to Scan with a Visual Impairment by Donna Sauerberger. This view of a cat simulates a restricted visual field, and we can only see the cat's eye and part of her nose. If we wanted to find the brush beside her, we would have to scan. But as we move away, we see more and more until we can see all of the cat as well as the brush beside her, demonstrating that the further you are from objects, the more of them you can see. When I train people with this visual condition to scan efficiently, I want to make it as challenging as possible. So I have them do this training while standing close to the scanning area, which is usually a wall. I start by getting an understanding of the size of their visual field when they are standing at that distance from the wall. I ask them to look at a spot, such as the one inch piece of yellow paper that I have taped to a brick wall here, while I put my hand on the wall above or below or to the side of the spot and slowly move my hand toward the spot and stop when they say that they can see my hand. I make a mental note as to how far from the spot they can see in that direction and then do it again from another direction until I have an idea of the height and width of the area that they can see from that distance. This is probably what they see. My hand just appears at the edge of their circle of vision from one direction and then moves away and appears again from another direction, etc. The first skill I teach is scanning systematically to search through the area efficiently. After having measured the height of their visual field at that distance, I make two strips of paper with the number one at the top and then a number two as far down as the height of their visual field, number three the same distance below that, and so on for each strip. Then I put one strip of paper toward the right on the wall and the other toward the left. The exercise is to start scanning at the number one on one side and go straight across to the other side. If you do it correctly, you'll arrive at the same number on the other strip. Then drop your eyes down just enough to scan over the next area and go back to the first strip. Notice that after we scan toward the right across the bricks and look down to the next number on the strip, when we scan back toward the left, we are scanning just below the area that we had just finished scanning. I usually do this on a smooth wall because when the wall has visible lines, they have too much of a hint, making it easy to scan horizontally. So when I have to work on a wall like this brick wall, I make it more challenging by covering the brick with paper as I am doing here. So let's try scanning again. As I start scanning from the number two on the right and scan toward the left, we have no brick lines to follow. So we don't know if we're scanning straight or crooked until we reach the strip on the left. And hooray, we came to number two on the left, so we know we did it right. If they start on number two and end up on number three on the other side, they learn that they have to avoid dropping their gaze. Once they can do it well, I remove one strip and have them start at the top of the other strip and look across, drop down just enough, and go back. If they don't end up on the next number, they've dropped down too far or not enough. Once they've learned to scan evenly, the second skill is scanning slowly enough to find objects. I've removed the paper between the numbered strips and taped pieces of different colored paper, about an inch square, on the brick wall. Oops, there's a cat below our wall, very interested in the papers. When you scan very fast, you may not see any targets at all. And when you scan a little slower, you can see the bright targets. But to see the low contrast targets, you have to scan even slower. For the final exercise, I remove the numbered strips of paper and all the little pieces of paper from the wall, and then have the students scan the wall systematically to find one or two little pieces of paper that I tape. I start with a paper that is bright against the wall and it is easy to see it. Finally, I have the student find a paper with low contrast. The first scan is too fast to see it, but it is found when the scanning is more slow.
More information is at www.sauerberger, that's S-A-U-E-R-B-U-R-G-E-R dot org forward slash D-O-N-A forward slash scanning R-P.